Welcome back. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about one of my favorite modifiers, the wireframe modifier. So let's go ahead and get on it. So right now we can't see any of our overlays or our grid. So let's do Alt Shift Z to bring them on back. Or you can just click that little button and let's add some more modifiers. But first we need to duplicate our original Suzanne monkey here. So go to your flexible design, right click and say duplicate the collection. And so now we have it here, and this one we're just gonna call wireframe. So type wireframe, and then we can do Suzanne.wireframe. And so next we want to drag this guy out. So we'll do G and Y. Make sure you're dragging the wireframe version and not the original. Um, and then do G and X. And now we can just bring that guy over here somewhere. So we're kind of just making a little grid of monkeys <laughs> right here. So go ahead and frame the selected um, monkey here, this little wireframe one, just click on it and hit period. And now we're going to add a modifier. So this one, like I said, we're going to do wireframe all the way at the bottom here, wireframe. And notice at first it looks terrible. It's like, what is this? looks like spider's web or something, who knows? But uh, that's okay, it's just, it's very, 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 very tiny. And this is when our scale ratios come into play. So say if we wanted the thickness of each one of these bars to be like two millimeters, then if we didn't have our scale ratios right, you know, these wouldn't be perfectly two. So since the scale ratio is one, this is actually two millimeters across here. And notice we are getting some crazy spikes. Uh, and that is because we have the thickness set to even. Sometimes we'll use even thickness, but today we don't need it for what we're trying to do. And look at that, we've got this crazy cool wireframe monkey. I use this all the time, like when I'm making hats or jewelry, but it's just, it's so powerful. And it looks like you've done all this crazy work, but we haven't. We've just made a monkey, fixed it, and then added a couple of modifiers. And it's just great. And you can just come back and say, oh, maybe it's, it needs to be a little thicker. Since this is a very small design, you know, it's like uh, about 75 millimeters this way. Um, we might need to make it maybe around three millimeters, maybe even four to really be able to print this because it's so, so tiny. And notice we're getting a lot of collision here. There's like a lot of uh, geometry mashing into itself. So maybe we'll tone that down a little bit, maybe three. So that's looking a little bit better. It should still print. So that is the wireframe monkey. Um, another cool thing that we can do, let's just uh, change the color here. We'll just subtract that, add a new color, and let's make that white is cool. Let's do that white. So now we've got a white wireframe monkey. And while we have the wireframe selected, uh, let's just duplicate that one. So duplicate the wireframe. So notice we have two, the 001 here. And let's just rename that one Voronoi or Veroni. Uh, so this isn't true Voronoi, but it, um, it just looks really cool to me. And I use this a lot as well. So do Suzanne.Voronoi. And we can just hit G and X and just slide it over here. And since we already have the wireframe at, you know, on here, we can go to our modifiers and let's just twiddle that up and let's add one more. So we've already talked about it before, but it's the subdivision surface in combination with the subdivision surface. So notice we are sorry with the wireframe. So we have the wireframe on and then Blender's doing the smoothing or the subdivision. So look at that, even if we just crank it up to two, it just looks so awesome and very nice. Let's change the color a little bit. Let's get a different color. Let's subtract that one and let's add a new color. And my blender is starting to really kind of bog down. So you can, if your your computer is maybe a potato and it's getting slower and slower, you can always just check and turn some of these off, you know, if you need to. Probably the one that's the heaviest is the remesh and the vo and the uh, the smooth one. So that may free up some space for you there. Whoop, turn off my wrong one. And so, you know, if you want to hide any of those, you can. But back to our color, sorry about that. Um, we can just change the color to be anything we want. Maybe this little, I don't know what color, that's like a pink or something. <laughs> we can do something like that. And I'm colorblind, so maybe that's a pinkish purple. I'm just call it pink. And there we go. So now we've got this really cool kind of smooth wireframe. I think of it as Voronoi. I know it's not true Voronoi, but it looks very similar. And I think it just looks so awesome. So, um, 
you can add this to any design that you create inside Blender. And it, to me, it just makes it look kind of futuristic and more 3D printed. And this, believe it or not, will 3D print without any wraps or supports. It will just just evolve on the print bed. So we're going to definitely have fun uh, printing that one. So let's go ahead and save. And I may turn on my, my models here just to kind of look at them all. Yeah, so now we're getting somewhere. We're adding so many new types of looks and styles and designs to our, 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 our same mesh here. So let's keep on going and I'll show you some more modifiers that you can use uh, inside of your blender.